now we're here with the, the, the great Paul Wilkinson. The great, the great the Paul up. Wilkinson, the best, the best <laughs> I can come with right now. Actually, no, a good friend to Graphic Studio, part of the Graphic family, been out to the castle, he's managed a lot of workshops with, throughout the UK and also done in the castle as well. Paul, welcome. Thank Lovely you. To see you. Thank you. Um, this is slightly my revenge on Paul because <laughs> uh, Paul always phones me up to go, can you, can you, um, have you got a minute? Yeah. Can I, do you mind if I just do a quick interview? Oh, okay then. Yeah, that's fine. And then, uh, then uh, we end up doing this really good 40 minutes hour interview on Mastering Portrait, Portrait Photography podcast, which, uh, if you haven't seen any or seen, actually, because you've seen them live now, can't you? Um, if you haven't listened to any, they're brilliant to take you on a journey. There are so many insightful interviews that Paul's done with, with the great and the good and, and people like me, the ordinary, the, in terms of anything to do with photography and the related business. Paul, welcome. Thank you. So tell us what you're going to talk about today. Well, we're going to talk about uh, something that we've turned out very successfully in our business is how to shoot and then sell portrait albums, particularly, of course, given that here is graphic, graphic user, uh, graphic studio albums. Um, I'm going to talk through the shoot, the structure of how we arrange things with the client, the workflow through the shoot, how we tie things off, how we go into the reveal, and then how we close out the sale. Brilliant. So that you get a reasonably good picture of at least one way of getting the best out of this incredible product. Because I, I know that many photographers go, I've got to sell wall art, I've got to sell wall art, and they sell a one piece. And I'm, and I'm not going to I'm not going to cut into any of your, <laughs> yeah, your time, yeah. because I know <laughs> that there's so much in there and it's going to be brilliant stuff. So I'm going to disappear off now. Um, we'll we're going to catch, catch up again, again after your, after your yep. presentation. We're going to have a talk in detail. It will raise questions from me and from others that come in. So I'm going to let you crack, let you crack on. on. So thank you for thank joining, you for joining us here, here at Graphic Studios Live Weekend of Live Stuff. stuff. Thanks, Thanks everyone. I'll, I'll be back, back in about an hour. Thanks. Thanks. I'm off. Uh, brilliant. Well, hello. It's really, really nice to be here. I have to say, I'm slightly nervous. I've never done a live global broadcast before, in spite of the fact that the podcast goes out all over the world. Uh, so forgive me if I kind of hurry things along. Um, today, we're going to talk about this, shooting, designing, and selling portrait albums. Now, I'm a portrait photographer. Uh, purebred in that sense. I absolutely love uh, taking portraits, although our business is a mix of weddings, uh, portraits, and commercial. And by commercial, I mean mostly uh, commercial headshots, but of course, the way we sell that is slightly different. Um, the business is about thirds, it's about a third of each, give or take. And this uh, presentation, we're only going to be talking about our portrait business, the social photography side of it, which basically means we're going to have a family in the studio, I'm going to shoot, or family or families, I'm going to shoot, and then we're going to bring them back to sell to them. Our studio looks like this. It's really beautiful. Uh, it happens to be the original uh, architectural studio of a world-famous architect called Peter Aldington OBE. He's in his 80s now, but this was designed back in the, the late 70s, and we are his artists in residence. We love it here. It's such a beautiful space. Yeah, it, it, literally, this is our back door that goes out onto the garden. And it's just, our studio is about impressions. One other thing, there's a, mis, there's a misconception about selling portrait photography, which is, of course, it's all about the image. And yes, it is, but it's actually about the experience. And that is going to be the running, free, running theme throughout the whole of this uh, presentation. Here's just, these are just a few of the images that I'm known for. These are all images taken actually on live shoots with clients. Uh, and they're not images that are done for a portfolio, though some of them have done very well in terms of competitions. Um, and that's how I like to work. I love to just have an absolute ball. I'm playing with the kids, messing around. We're having a really nice time and creating imagery as we go. And if I'm lucky, then I might just spot an opportunity to take a portfolio or a competition image. The people I work with, I've got an amazing team. There's three of us in our studio. Sarah on the, uh, let me get this right, left. <laughs> I had to just check. Sarah on the left. That's my wife. Uh, myself and Sarah set the business up about 14 years ago, give or take. Her background is marketing. My background is originally is industrial designer. I've got, now I've got a PhD or got a PhD after that in, in computing and machine learning. So my background was not really creative except for the fact that originally I trained as an industrial designer 
and then I, I was a musician and I wanted to get out of the IT world and do something truly creative and ended up uh, setting up a business. Michelle in the middle, many people who are watching this will know Michelle, who's just lovely. And she knows everyone in the UK photography industry, having worked in it in album supplies and uh, product supplies to the industry for probably 20 years. And she's an incredible asset to our business. And all three of us believe one thing, the client is everything. The most important thing in our business is the client. It's everything about the client. So through this, originally we had really hoped that we were going to be able to do a live shoot. That was our plan. We were going to get a family together, jump in and out of the studio and in and out of daylight. And we were really, really excited about doing that. But when we actually looked at the logistics of firstly getting a family to make their own way up to the studio here, then make sure they passed all the COVID tests and all of the risks inherent with that, I'll be honest, I shied away from it. So what I've done is I've taken a video that we had filmed of me working and, and of my team working a couple of years ago, and I've just chunked it out a little bit so that you can see how we shoot and how we approach the client. Because although this is about the album, the album at the end, the fact that I can sell albums, the fact that I can sell any product at all, is entirely down to the fact that we put the customer first. So the first thing that happens is when a client arrives, this is what they are greeted with, our beautiful studio front door and Michelle. Now, Michelle will kill me, but that's the freeze frame that I chose. I'm so sorry, Michelle, if you're watching this. Um, however, the point is, this is the first impression. When you open the door and the client comes in, this is the moment, right? You've done the emails, you've done the phone calls, you've done the build-up, you've done all sorts of things. You've advised them maybe what clothing to bring, but they arrive at the door and the first thing that greets them is a big smile each and every time. I can't stress this enough. We are a service industry. We're an experience industry. We are just like a high-end restaurant. And if you don't enjoy the experience, how on earth are you going to get great sales out of that? I'm a business, but we do it by making the client very happy. The other thing that's key to this, and it will run throughout the whole shoot, have you ever gone to a hotel? Have you ever gone to a hotel or a restaurant and not known where to go? You know the kind of like you walk in and it's like, do I seat myself? Is there a reception somewhere? What do I do? And that confusion is awful. And that sets the whole tone of the rest of your evening. We don't allow that to happen. The client arrives and we all know what we're up to. So Michelle will uh, bring the client in. She'll greet them. She'll say hello. She walks them up the stairs. And I throw someone on this for a reason. We have a big set of shelves of all of the awards I've won. Now, there's a lot of debate about should you show awards? Because you don't sell awards, right? I don't sell awards. Well, we do show them, but we never, ever talk about them. Ever. <laughs> unless, unless I'm asked. But actually, if I'm asked and somebody spots the awards and so on, you know, can you talk about that? I say yes. And this here, this... This is my favorite award. This is, this is the award. Now, I've got awards for portrait photographer, wedding photographer, you name it. This, this is my favorite. This is an award I won for virtual Formula One go-karting. <laughs> it was a stag do, and I won. Uh, it was over many rounds. I beat the teenagers who won the same stag do. And the reason I show that is partly because there's that slightly British modesty where I don't really want to have to talk about the awards because I just find it slightly embarrassing. That's a very British thing. I'm sorry. But I do want to have a laugh with the kids. And of course, if it's a family, the kids will appreciate me winning a computer game far more than me winning a portrait award. We keep the awards there because there's that sort of subliminal thing that when a client comes in, what we're trying to do is give trust, give them the trust they've come to the right place. So we have them, we don't talk about them, they walk past them. After that, the client's going to come in and we're going to sit and have a conversation. Uh, usually, we'll have a cup of coffee. Usually, I'm very energetic. I'm like this 24-7, I can't help myself. Um, we're going to have a chat. Uh, I don't like the freeze frame I chose of myself there. Uh, the one thing I've done during the lockdown is to uh, gain hair and lose weight. <laughs> so hopefully, I'll be able to have a haircut when I come out at the end of this. But we're investing time. We're investing time with the client. We're spending time sitting, talking. Because one of the things that we've noticed is very often the client will have arrived and they're stressed. Imagine, imagine a family of four getting into a car arriving at a studio 
And then having to be pristine because parents will want their kids to look clean and tidy and just how they want them. Imagine all of that stress in a tin box. Our clients come from all over the UK. They could have driven for a couple of hours. We are used to the fact they're going to turn up and be stressed. And our first job is to get rid of that and take control. Control seems to be a dirty word when it comes to portraiture. People like this whole kind of relax, let people do what they want, very informal. Well, we're all of those things. But don't think for a minute that I'm not in control of it. So I'm going to sit and I'm going to ask them about their family, ask them about the relationships in the family, uh, their jobs, the kids, school, what they like, what they don't like. If they... Um, haven't, uh, if they brought lots of clothing with them, some of our neighbours think I'm running a bed and breakfast. It's hilarious, really, because some of our clients turn up with suitcases with wheels. It takes two of us to lift them into the studio. Well, because they're not sure what to wear, so if they've brought lots of options on the clothing, I'll go through that with them. And what I'm doing at that point is I'm sitting, I'm slowing things down, and I'm putting together a game plan. That game plan is what we're going to shoot. I need to understand a little bit more about them, a little bit more about what it, what it is that they would really like to come out of the session with. Another misconception is that I don't need to sell. Of course I need to sell. <laughs> Why wouldn't I sell? The client hasn't turned up randomly. The client's going to be disappointed if at the end of this whole process, I don't sell them something. That's why they've come to me. That's the whole raison d'etre for the shoot. But I need to have a better understanding of what it is they value, the kind of products they like. We, we actually have a very limited set of products. I'll talk about that later. But I'm getting a real insight. Usually, we will then go outside. Now, I've got this beautiful studio garden right on my back doorstep. Our studio is part of the garden. And we always start outside if I can, because I stand a much better chance of taking the heat out of a situation if I do it out in the garden and if I try and put two kids and a family into the studio. I can do it that way around, it doesn't worry me. So if, if I spot, for instance, a teenager who spent ages straightening her hair and the weather is damp, then we're going in the studio first. Because if I go in the garden first, you know, and she's not gonna like those pictures. So we'll do it the other way around. I can, I can change and adapt, but I've set out a plan in my head of what we're gonna do. I will tell the client what we're gonna do. I'll talk about the outfits. Some of the outfits inside, outside, maybe we'll do the florally stuff. We're going to do that in the garden, but you bought plain blacks and whites. Maybe we're going to do those in the studio. We might decide to bounce in and out. This isn't random. It feels like it sometimes. It feels like I'm just making it up as I go, but I'm not. What I'm trying to figure out is from the descriptions they've given me, from what they're telling me, what am I going to shoot? How am I going to find a way of solving the question they have in their heads of what, what it is they like on the wall? So I'm going to do that by creating as much variety as I can, because I also know at the end of the day, there are two things that sell really well out of our studio. One is a frame with a multiple set of images in it. The other is a portrait album. Why? Well, because I've got a variety of images. I'm working towards a variety of images. Now, of course, I'm a photographer, right? So what I really want is an award-winning shot in the studio, probably fine art, probably gloomy, probably. But that's not necessarily what's going to sell. So I'm working flat out in the garden, let's say, for this particular shoot to keep everything joyous, keep everything happy. And if you notice in the background of the freeze frame here, the couple have still got, or in fact, this is their second coffee. I felt right. The weather was nice. We're having a really lovely time. We're laughing. They've got coffee. Yeah, that's me laughing. <laughs> We're going to go out to the main body of the garden. Uh, throwing leaves isn't necessarily something I normally do, but it has an energy about it. And what I'm looking for, actually, is the relationship between the kids, and I'm looking for the energy. I'm looking for all of those positive vibes, that real pulse of a shoot. Because again, if I create all of that, what do you think they're going to remember? They're going to remember they had an amazing time. And we don't sell pictures. I'm not doing this as a commercial photographer. I'm doing this as a family, social photographer. What we sell are memories. We sell an experience. We sell a record of the relationships in that family. Yes, of course, I want to win a fine art competition because all photographers do. But actually what I'm selling is a set of memories. We'll step into the studio. This is actually um, a different couple because I didn't have footage of the family in the studio. But we do the same thing. I'm still looking for the serious moments, but I, I know the parents will be looking for the laughter. And in this particular instance, although I'm going to take some shots that might be good for the portfolio, 
uh, what the parents will want to buy, and this actually did turn into a, um, a studio album, a, a portrait album, is they're going to want to capture that, the relationship between the siblings. Now, it's not accidental that there's a black background and they're wearing black jeans and black tops. That's because I knew once I got them there that not only could I capture the magic between them, not only could I create the laughter and the dynamic, the energy between them, but I could also slow it down a little, take another shot, and that might just be a really beautiful, gentle portfolio or competition image. Now, at the end of the shoot, so we will have spent about two hours from start to finish. We only do two shoots in a day, or I only do two shoots in a day, unless I've really upset someone like Sarah or Michelle, in which case they might book me three or four. I only do two shoots in a day. Why? Well, two reasons. One is I like the opportunity to really enjoy my job. I like the fact that I get to talk to people and spend time with people, people I genuinely like. And to give an example of that, this was the story, and until I got sidetracked by being introduced by Jeremy, I was thinking about how do I start the presentation? And I was thinking about it as I drove out of our village in our Land Rover, and literally I'm waiting on one of those traffic calming things where they cut into the road and it slows you down. And coming towards me was an open top, brand new beetle with a roof down, and two people waving furiously at me and beeping the horn. And it was a client, it's a couple, whose wedding I photographed. And I photographed their wedding because I'd done some headshots of the bride years prior to that. They invited myself and Sarah to uh, Switzerland to photograph their engagement. I spent a weekend, we spent a weekend there, four days at a big festival, photographing them in their, in their home. And now they live in our village. And that's what we're doing, is I'm forming relationships and I'm actually spending time with our clients. Our clients are the most valuable thing that I have in the, in, the, in the business. And genuinely, genuinely, it made me smile for the rest of the hour's journey up to here, to the studio. So we invest that time. The other reason I do it is that I want the client to go away with a memory. And I want that memory to be that nothing was too much trouble. Now, that's not the same thing as saying the client's always right if they're asking for stuff I can't do. But they are going to spend... They know we've invested in that relationship. They know we've invested in that... Um, uh, the whole experience. So what we do at the end of the shoot is we bring them back, into, back downstairs and I'm going to spend just a little bit more time with them. Why? Well, because I need them to know what the next steps are. When I went back to the, when I, what I started out with was this idea of being in a restaurant or a hotel and you don't know where to go. There is nothing worse than being slightly confused or not sure what happens next. So I sit them back down. Now, if the kids have had enough, maybe I'll get one of the parents to go out into the garden or maybe go, if they've got you know, baby seats and small kids, maybe start putting them into the car. But I'm going to spend time with whoever I figure out is the buyer. Somebody in that relationship probably is the buyer. And I will sit them down and I will spend some time talking through what's on the walls. Now, throughout the shoot, I will say things like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, that's an award-winning image, or that would look great, huge, or do you know what? You don't want one of those, you want three of those, you want a triptych. And I'm laughing. I'm taking the mickey, really. I'm just joking around. But the whole time, I'm sending messages that A, the pictures are good, and B, they want to buy one. This will look amazing on a wall, do you not think? You know, I might show them the back of the camera, I might just let them enjoy what they're seeing. At this point, though, when I sit them down, I now need to be a little bit more prescriptive and make sure that I've got my points across. So we give them a price list. It's a very simple price list. I've got one somewhere. Uh, I'll talk to Jeremy about it later. Um, it's a small price list. It has very little on it. And we've always restricted what we sell. Why? Well, there's no evidence at all that being able to sell a huge myriad of product gives you more sales. It doesn't. In fact, having a reduced product set gives you more sales, and there's a ton of research onto that. I only sell, for instance, square albums. Always have. Why? Well, it's very simple. If, I, if they want to buy a small album, but then they upgrade it to a big album, I don't have to do very much to redesign it. Also, if they buy a big album, but they want a copy album, the ratios are exactly the same. And just as importantly for me, I love a two-by-one panoramic. So when you open up a beautiful lay-flat album, 
as a square album, of course it's now got a two by one aspect ratio and I can have a great panoramic. So we've always sold just square albums, for instance. But I'll sit the client and I'll say to them, right, you're going to come back in two weeks and I'm going to show you pictures of the people you love most in the world. Your family, right? I'm going to show you those pictures and then you're going to choose the images that you want to buy and put in the wall or maybe in an album if necessary. I'll wave my arms around as usual and say, this, look, you want big frames, but I'm joking, but I'm trying to get into their head, don't buy small. I say to them, go and measure your walls. Please, when you come back, know the space in which you're going to put your wall art. Just go and do it. And they say, well, how big should something be? And I say, well, the simplest trick, there are two tricks. One, get some newspaper, preferably broadsheet because they've got bigger sheets. Stick it together, put it on a wall, and keep resizing it until you think it looks okay. Most of my designers are not, sorry, most of my customers are not designers. They're just my customers. They don't necessarily know what looks good or what doesn't. So I say, stick some newspaper together. The other thing I say to them, and this is really effective, is I say, go and look at the mirrors that you have downstairs in your house. Because very few people have a little mirror. <laughs> Most people have a big mirror. And of course they have a big mirror because people who sell mirrors know that you need a big mirror for it to look right. So they sell big mirrors. You can buy small mirrors, but in a downstairs situation, most mirrors are pretty big. And they look great on a wall. I say, go and have a look at your mirrors, measure the mirror, and that's at least a good starting point for when you come back. I talk through the options, there aren't that many. And I say that you're going to come back in two weeks. You're going to love it. We're going to make a real fuss of you. And uh, it's going to be just amazing. But please be ready because whatever else happens, you can only buy from us by being here in the studio. Now, of course, there are exceptions to that. We will have clients all over the world. And when we have to, we'll work remotely. But we are building, we have built a business that's based on relationships and the experience. It's fine dining in the photographic industry. We want you to come. We want you to soak up the atmosphere. We want to invest time in you. You're going to invest time in us. And we want it to be really, really special for you. So at that point, they leave or they head to the door. And I walk out with them and I make sure they're in the car. If somebody's taking the kids out to the car and got them strapped in, I'll stick my head in through the window and wave and, or pull tongues or blow a raspberry or something. We're constantly laughing because as they drive away, as they drive away, they must be filling their heads with the memories of the shoot. It's really important. We don't sell pictures. We sell an experience. We sell memories. We sell emotions, relationships. We're not selling pictures. If, I don't, if they don't drive away with a really positive, really joyful view of what they've just been through, it's going to be very hard to sell pictures later. So I make a real effort, walk them to the car, and at this point, as I shut the door, we've invested time. We've invested energy. We've invested skill and talent and creativity, and we've invested an awful lot of affection with our client. That's what's going to sell pictures, that sense of we genuinely like people. I'm lucky, I'm hardwired that way. I like everybody. <laughs> the minute I meet people, I love you. I'm just that kind of person. I genuinely like people. Yeah, okay, you know, not everyone's going to be your cup of tea, but for those two hours, they have to be. They have to be someone you like. I'm lucky that I'm wired that way. And of course, life goes on, and occasionally some of them turn out to be people maybe probably I wouldn't necessarily choose to have a relationship with, a friendship with. But it's really important that it's genuine, it's authentic, and that they feel it. So as I, I literally, I help people back to the car, carrying their three suitcases of clothes and placing it in the boot for them. And then they go away, and in two weeks' time, they're going to come back. A little bit on workflow. Um, I've included this because I get asked quite a lot about workflow. Our workflow is efficient, and you don't design a workflow you kind of work it out. I know that sounds obtuse, but you sort of do. Because it doesn't matter who tells you what, it's so specific to the way you shoot and the way you want to present your images that um, that sort of comes on its own. For us, I back up the images, I rename them, they go into Lightroom, and then they hand it, they're handed over to Sarah. I don't look after that side of the business. I don't do the image selection. I don't do the cult. 
Why? Because I just like every image, particularly images that I've had to lie in a puddle for. <laughs> I think they're amazing. And Sarah will simply, yes, but you've made the mother's hips look big in that shot. It's going, okay. Sarah does the selection because she is my brand gatekeeper. She is the person who knows the brand inside out. She knows exactly how my brand should be represented or how our brand should be represented. I think I do, but I get too emotionally attached to images like all photographers. And so Sarah does the selection. What's the selection ratios? She rejects 90% of what I shoot. Now I've had to get used to this. I've had to get used to two things. One, somebody else <laughs> culling my images, but it was the biggest and bravest and most successful thing I've ever done in the business. And the second thing I've had to get used to is that in our industry, we attach an awful lot of importance to how you do something, not what you do. And I've had to kind of get used to the fact that I'm never going to feel comfortable with that. I sketch with the camera. I've always sketched with the camera. I will always sketch with the camera. I did it on film. I now do it on digital. I like that process. I genuinely love it. And when I'm in the shoot, I'm telling the client, I'm trying this. I've no idea if it's going to work. You know, I've seen some lights. I've seen some shapes some form. Your kids look amazing. Let's give it a go. If, if it works, I smell awards. If it doesn't work, you're never going to see this picture. Sarah will decide whether or not it worked ultimately. Um, and she will tell me what pictures have been selected. I've put up a graph. <laughs> this belies a little bit of my data-driven history as a, with a PhD in uh, machine learning. You'd expect me to be sorted into the data. Here is just one little insight. I keep a log of every single shoot, how many image was, images were shown, how many images were taken, which is how I know it's 90% rejection and then the revenue generated per shoot. This is just for portrait shoots. It doesn't show that much, except that as we increase the number of images we show to a client, my sales go up. And of course, that would be really nice, wouldn't it, if we could show them a 1,000 images and then make more money, because then we wouldn't have to lose any. Mm, unfortunately, that's not quite the story. Actually, when we look at this data properly, it's not the number of images we show that drive the price up. It's the number of relationships in the shoot that drive the revenue up. Because, of course, if I've got 12 people in a shoot, I've got more people to sell to, I've got more relationships to uh, capture, and which drives up the image count, which even at 90% rejection means we're going to show them a few more pictures and we're going to have more ways of generating revenue. So it's not the number of images you show that drive it up. In fact, our sweet spot is around about 45 to 50 images. But if we have big families, they always generate revenue well. So if you have the opportunity, always ask a family, is there anyone you'd like to bring with you? Would you like to bring your mum and dad? Because then, of course, I've got grandparents with grandchildren. I've got maybe cousins, maybe two families. I've got mum and dad, mum and dad, the siblings, the siblings with the parents, the siblings with all of the guys, all of the girls. You can go on and on and on. Now, when you have multiple layers like that, of course, it's going to drive your sales, but you can still do that within the framework of a normal shoot. If I see that happen and people bring people into the studio for the shoot, I simply extend it a little bit. Why would I not? <laughs> you know, we have the time, we've baked the time into our schedule. And so now I've got the opportunity to create more images or create more, more of a record, more memories of each of the different relationships. And of course, that's going to translate well. Post-production, not much, but there's a key message in here. Every image that goes out, every image a client sees, every single image the client sees has been finished by me. No exceptions, no ifs, no buts. We always do it that way. I do it that way so that they get to see quality images straight away. I know there's an argument that why don't I just finish the ones that we sell? Yeah, I could do that. But there are a couple of problems with that. Firstly, a lot of our clients won't necessarily be able to imagine the image when it's finished. And if I only finish what I sell, after the sales processes, process, the images have to come back to me to be finished. And I could be busy with other things. And it caused a little bit of a bottleneck in the business. So I don't do that. We finish everything. And that then means whatever we do, the, uh, when Sarah and Michelle are working with the client, they can uh, rely on the fact that whatever image is there is ready to go. At the same time, I pick out my heroes, the images that I love. Very occasionally, I'll go back to the images that have been rejected and pick out a shot that I think might do well in a competition. 
Very often, moodier pictures do well in competitions because they have that visceral impact with a viewer that does not know who's in front of the lens. But happy pictures tend to do better when it's like a parent or a relative buying them. So Sarah will be biasing towards the happy. And of course, if I'm looking for something moody or something dark for a competition, I might go back and pick it and then add that into the mix. And of course, it'll become a hero. They're marked in Lightroom so that downstream, every hero image is not just obvious to Michelle and Sarah when they're talking to the client, but it also is replicated onto Dropbox so I can get to it on an iPhone. And later on, when we've got the permissions to use the images, of course, I've got folders and folders of hero images that I can use for social media, a happy byproduct. Okay, so now we're going to go on to the reveal. We call it the reveal. We've always called it the reveal. And I know there's an awful lot of different views of what you should call it. Should you call it reveal? Should you call it the sales consultation, design consultation, whatever. For us, this works. It's soft, it's understated, but because I've briefed the client and educated the client throughout the process, they know, they know they're coming to buy pictures. They, I don't need to call it a sales consultation. I call it the reveal. They're going to come back. They're going to have tea. They're going to have coffee. They're going to sit and they're going to relax. As an aside, anyone ever thought about the smell of a studio? Well, in our studio, when you come for the shoot, the candles are lit. We use, I think we use Yankee candle. We, the whole studio just smells lovely. When they come back for the reveal, the same candles are lit. Old school, olfactory memory, the memory attached to the sense of smell is the most powerful trigger of memories. If I've done my job well and I've created an atmosphere of joy and an atmosphere that we've invested time and affection to the client, when they come back and the smell hits them, it's back. I've got them back into the mood in a heartbeat. We've briefed the client carefully. We've told them to measure the walls. We've also suggested gently, much as I love their kids, they're going to find this bit really boring. And they are going to find it really boring. But also, you do not want a buyer under extra pressure because the kids are getting antsy. You want it to be completely relaxed. You want to invest the time. You want them to chill out and just enjoy the moment. We bring them back into the reveal room, which I was going to take a picture of this morning. But because of COVID, we have re rejigged our studio so it doesn't look quite the way it should do under normal circumstances. But we sit them down, tea coffee. It's Sarah or Michelle who look after this. I'm not part of this bit of the process deliberately because I'm disorganized and chaotic and energetic and full of stories and I just want to chat and have a nice time. Sarah and Michelle, while they love our clients, are much more organized and they're able to work the client gently through the process whereas I'm a distraction. So we keep me out of the way for a minute. I sit them down. They're on our sofa. The candles are lit and then we press play. Now the point of this is we've told the client, don't try and pick your pictures now. This is not about that. Just enjoy it. Your family was beautiful. The shoot was beautiful. We absolutely loved absolutely love being with them just enjoy the client if it's a husband and wife team which usually it is they'll just snuggle up on our sofa we hand them the kleenex because <laughs> there's tears and we sit back and we watch imagine seeing the pictures of the people you love the most in the world in an environment like this I don't need to do very much in terms of selling. That's doing its own job. Now, we used to spend ages investing time hand-cranking these slideshows in uh, Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro and others. And then as an experiment, I ran them in Animoto to see if the clients would notice the change. No, no change. So these are now run through Animoto. They're just pictures, but they're pictures that the couple, the pictures of people the couple love more than anybody else in the world, right? And it makes us tearful too, because if we've genuinely cared about the client, we genuinely care when we see these pictures come up. I know I've done a good job when I choke up watching these slideshows. 
This is a trick we've learned. The heroes that I selected earlier are now clearly marked in the sideshow, but we've put them into frames. We've put them into wall art. Again, we're not saying to the client, pick one. We're saying, just enjoy, relax. You've got all the time in the world. What I'm doing quietly is setting in their heads. I'm just reinstilling. They're going to buy something. It's going to be beautiful and it's going to go on the wall. And then my signature, just because I like it. And then, and then I'm allowed to come and talk to the clients again. <laughs> they allow me back in the room. I'm allowed to come in and inject the energy back. Because at that point, probably there are tears, they're probably overwhelmed, and we need to just break things up a little bit. So I'll come, I'll sit with them, and I'll um, just say hello, and say how much I loved their shoot. Here's a trick, here's a thing. I'm British, so I find it very hard to say I created amazing photos. Can't do it. I try. I've, you know, I've got lots of American colleagues, American friends. I worked in the States for a year. Still can't do it. Find it incredibly just hard, all right? But what I do is I say, that picture of you, you look amazing. You look so happy. You look so alive. Your eyes, oh my God, your eyes are gorgeous. I loved your outfit. I loved the moment. Do you remember that moment when the two kids were laughing? They looked so amazing in that photograph. I don't have to say it's an amazing photograph because that would obviously bring the hairs up on the back of my neck and make me blush and sweat a little bit. I just say, you look incredible. It was a privilege to take that picture of you. And all I'm doing is essentially the same thing, same messages, the pictures are gorgeous. At that stage, I back out again for a while and let Sarah and Michelle do their job. Now, if I can't be there for the reveal, and it happens, at least they have the heroes listed so they can see the pictures that I felt were the strongest. Of course, when I come in, I say, that picture, you've got to buy that picture. If you don't buy that picture, I'm having it printed really big to go in the studio. You know, of course I do. But what I'm after is this whole sense of a flow through. It feels really random, but it's so not. It's so carefully done to make the best of all of the players I have on the board, all of the pieces of the puzzle. Sarah, Michelle, myself, my client, and the pictures, of course. They're going to do a selection process. The selection process is one of love. It is not one of delete. <laughs> we don't delete anything. Anyway, I'm not, per I'm not comfortable with that as a sales, a sales technique. I know it's effective, but I'm looking at the long game. I'm looking at that client for the rest of, that, of their lives, rest of our time together. So I don't do the delete model. I do, which images do you really love? And which images do you like, but actually you, can, you don't necessarily even want to put them on the wall. And we get them to go through that whole process. And normally what happens is they're left with about 25 pictures in the set that they really, really love. Well, 25 pictures, that's not a bad shout for an album selection. So at that point, we've already designed an album anyway, because we have that in our back pocket. And I'll play them another quick slideshow. So this is, we always have this ready to go. And when they can't get the, the number of images right down, or maybe they've just picked one that they want on the wall, and we'll say, do you, what do you want to do with the rest of those images? What about an album? Or maybe they've said our walls are really small because they live in a cottage, because I live in an area full of little cottages. And we say, well, OK, maybe an album is the way to go forward. But I've already designed it. And if they do decide to go for an album, I've already got that, for instance, here on an iPad. So that if they're then going through and deciding which images they'd really like, it's all here. So instead of saying, oh, I don't know where to start, what images do we use? They will say, I don't like that image, can we swap it for another? Which means that actually the number of images that we put in the album example design probably isn't going to change that much. Maybe one or two, maybe it'll increase, but our averages are, are pretty high. This works really well because I'm guiding the client. And of course, at the end of the day, I'm the designer. I know what I'm doing, so I'm helping them. I'm not selling to them. I'm simply saying, if you put these images together, don't they look beautiful? Funny enough, black and white across the page. We'll mix color and black and white occasionally, but usually, for instance, we'll keep them consistent. And all I'm doing is trying to help my client. I'm trying to help them get the most out of the time they've invested 
And when they've, all of that time and all of that effort mustn't go to waste. He says, something's died. <laughs> that was the end of my <laughs> laptop's died. Luckily, all of the slideshows are done. So at the end of all of that, we bring the client in, we've sat them down, we've shown them everything, and there's a key closeout to the actual reveal. We always take all of the money for the product at that point. Why? Well, it means I'm not left with, for instance, racks of frames that are half paid for or albums that have the final payment to go. I'm not going to commit any, any effort at all to the product until the point at which I've got the money in. Now, part of sales, in fact, the purpose of sales is to solve a problem, always. You know, they have a need. I have the ability to fix that. How am I going to fix that? With album sales, it's really useful for us to solve the problem, for instance, that they didn't know what to get rid of, or they want something, but they can't put it on the wall, or occasionally, they're just not people who put pictures of their family on the wall. They just want something modest, and the album is a great solution for that. It's wonderful because I'm fixing a problem. Another problem that comes in quite a lot is I want files. Yeah, every photographer on the planet is having that, but what we say to them, if you desperately want files, you can have files, but I'm not going to sell you files. I can give you the files, but they'll only come if you buy an album. So I will give you a copy of a file for every image you put in your album. They'll print to A4, they won't print huge. But it, what that does is it helps me solve the problem that they want files, but it does it in a way that I'm happy. They can see how beautiful an album is is they're going to have a product everything we do is based around a product with weddings we never do a files only we only ever do albums but we do the same technique and of course because they want some of those files they'll drive up the number of images in their album so i have the second happy byproduct that they're going to put extra images in we sell albums on a per image basis and i'll show you so this is one of our albums Beautiful. Original wedding book. Absolutely gorgeous. Standard family album for us. Now notice something about this album. There aren't that many pictures in it, but look how thick it is. That's not an accident. The number, the cost per page of a Graphy Studio album isn't that big. So why would I try limiting the number of pages? What I want the client, every time they pick this up, it's got my name carved in the back etched, sorry, etched, laser etched, darlings, in the back. Beautiful leathers. My favorite leather, as it happens, is the Sequoia. Um, and why do I like leathers? And I know that's not funky for family, but why do I like the leathers? Because the more this album is held, the more people hold it, the better the leather gets. You know what leather's like, right? It's a phenomenal material. It's a natural material. It changes over time, and I love it. And because of that, we sell mostly leathers. It's absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful but we always make sure no matter how many images they choose it's thick and it's heavy because that's a sign of quality and we all know that bit of psychology right where they serve you cheap brandy in a heavy glass and you think it's more expensive than it is it's the same psychology it feels weighty it comes in a beautiful box it's got my name on the front now i have a theory that quite a lot of people take the album out and put it on a bookshelf or something or a coffee table and they use the box as a jewelry box i have no idea but I like the fact that my name's lasered onto the front and it works really, really well for us. And that's how we do it. And we do that every day of the week. And then at the end of the process, I'll just put that down, try not to drop things. And at the end of the process, we are going to invite the client back. There are three contact points with a client. And so there's the first one, and there are, lots of multiple, there are multiple contact points to the client, but there are three physical visiting points. The first, and most important, is the shoot. The second, the reveal. They're going to leave the reveal happy that they spent money well, they've committed the finances, they're happy in their decisions, and we will then go through the final design process with them, just signing anything off. And then the third, of course, is the pickup. 
The pickup is so often ignored. Why do we ignore the pickup? They're going to come back, and it's my opportunity to spend some time with the client again. They're going to come back and see that album or see their products. They're going to see us again. And we're going to make sure that the last thing they experience is, again, sitting and chatting if they have the time. Our clients have probably driven a couple of hours to come and get the product from us. It's all ribboned up. It's all beautiful. It's beautifully presented. And they're going to enjoy that moment as much as anything else. And the excitement when they come back to the studio is absolutely palpable. And we're really good at this stuff. And it's, it's really well organized, but it's all done in a way that it feels like there's no pressure at all. We're just enjoying our client. We're just enjoying the relationship we've formed with them. We're just enjoying them and what our business does. It still gives me the biggest kick in the world when I'm driving out of the village and a couple of people are flagging me, waving frantically at me, beeping their horn because we formed a relationship with them years ago. I can't drink with them at the moment, of course, because of the COVID restrictions, but I cannot wait until we can. And that, broadly speaking, is how we do it. We do it through an awful lot of love, an awful lot of affection, some creativity, um, but a lot of care. Every member of my team is wired the same way. We all love the client. And because of that, it's put us in a brilliant position that our product is solid, that is important. Our pricing is clear and simple. That is important. We're going to guide the client through the process. That's crucial. Um, the designs are pre-done. That really helps. I have amazing products. The Graphic Studio product is incredible, but it's not what I'm selling. I'm selling pictures and memories. It's, so I guess the, the point I'm trying to get across, if there is one, is I couldn't do this without this incredible product. I couldn't do this out of range of incredible products. Um, but I don't, it's not the product I'm selling. It's the photography that I'm selling. It's the experience and the memories that I'm selling. So